you, Candice, for inviting me to join you here tonight. It's a great honor and privilege. I cannot think of another place I would rather be than here with fellow art lovers. Thank you for bringing us art and sculpture so that we may revel and celebrate the beautiful work of human hands. Thank you for the work that you do that adds color, culture, and character to our neighborhood. Thank you for the work you do nurturing young artists and catapulting them to the world stage so that collectors in New York and London and beyond may see the richness of what South Africa has to offer. I celebrate your extraordinary efforts to bring many hands to work in solidarity, to support artists during the pandemic, a difficult time for all of us. I think I speak for all the art lovers here when I say we are truly grateful and lucky to have you. The title of this exhibition is Dirty Hands, Clean Money. And the work you see tonight has been a year in the making. John's inspiration for this work were the humble recyclers we see every day in our neighborhoods, quietly going through waste and grime, back-breaking work to earn an honest living. Dirty Hands, Clean Money. Many times we impatiently overtake them in traffic as they push their heavily laden trolleys on our streets. It's easy to forget the environmental contribution the recyclers make to reduce the waste in landfills in our cities and dismiss their economic contribution. The title of this exhibition reminded me of one of my favorite poems, The Hands of Others by jo James Stockinger. I want to share it with you as we reflect on what John, Candice, and her team have put together for us today. It's the hand of other people that supplies the needs of our bodies, both in infancy and beyond. For each of us lives in and through an immense movement of hands of other people. The hands of other people lift us from the womb. The hands of other people grow the food we eat. The hands of other people weave the clothes we wear and build the shelters we inhabit. The hands of other people give pleasure to our bodies in moments of passion and aid and comfort in times of affliction and distress. It is in the hands it is in, in and through the hands of other people that the commonwealth of nature is appropriated and accommodated to the needs and pleasures of our separate individual lives. And at the end, it is the hands of other people that lower us into the earth. Like you, many of you, I first met John at a Candace Berman exhibition. I admired so much what he could do with a collage that I got myself a portrait of a smiling young girl that has pride of place over the mantelpiece. We exchanged contact details and have kept in touch since. There was the occasional message when there was an interesting art story to share, and at Christmas, New Year's, and birthdays, as you do. John started off as a painter, but today is famous for his beautiful collages. Every time I see his work, I'm filled with wonder how he can transform bits of colored paper magazines glued to a piece of paper or canvas and create such art with perspective, depth, and beauty as you can see here. I'm struck by the freedom and sincerity of every piece. Each work nourished by an irrepressible curiosity of the world around him. It's art that draws you in, makes you smile, makes you happy. I think it's a reflection of his spirit. So seven years ago, 
When it was my turn to arrange a team building event at work, I knew exactly what I would do. No abseiling, for sure. No tumbling through the rough, but a visit to John's studio. I dared to be different. A risky choice for sure, knowing my team, but one which the team would soon not forget. A Johannesburg taxi to take us downtown, lunch in Fordsburg, and best of all, we got to see John's studio and see him at work, a day filled with many firsts. So often, we view a piece of art without context, with no notion of its inspiration, the creative process, the angst, the time it takes to create, the economics, how the artist ekes out a living, or the backstory that adds color, pun intended, to the work. Those stories form part of my collector's stories, vignettes to share, excite, and infect others into becoming collectors of pieces that they love. We could all relate to his art form from our childhood memories of art class and marvel at his gift to turn ordinary magazine pages to collages of great beauty and grace. We had a lovely chat about his work that afternoon. And I encourage you to take time to talk to him this evening, get to know him, and fall in love with his work. For me, the idea of dirty hands, clean money, is a timely reflection on our times. Indeed, artists do not just give us pleasure. They can be our conscience, too. Today, John reminds us of the value of an honest day's work, when sadly, there are so many around us who desperate, desperately want to work, any work, but cannot find it. To me, dirty hands, clean money, is a simple idea that resonates with a promise of restoration in these hard times. Restoration from the indignity and woes of unemployment and poverty. Restoration from corruption that has seeped into many of the institutional structures of our society. It reiterates the importance of ensuring that everyone can exercise their individual agency when afforded access to honest work. Work can be salve to feel feelings of anger, dejection, and frustration, even as we read about valiant efforts of the legal system to stamp out the ills. John's work reminds me that we can restore our communities with the work of our hands, whether we are in Bryanston, Johannesburg, South Africa, or the world. It's a reminder that we have a responsibility to be role models for young and old and can do so when we demonstrate the honor in hard work. We have a responsibility to create jobs if we can and mitigate the impact of corruption and vice in our communities. I think John invites us to think how we can better where we are. How can we use our hands and gifts to repair our community. Listen to John's gentle call. Thank you. Can I mention a little bit about your book? I can for sure. This book was a journey of love. It took me six years. And my husband and daughter will tell you, there were many times when it was never clear whether I'd finish. <laughs> you know, they'd keep asking me, like, where are you? What are you doing? And um, anyway, I got there in the end. It's an amazing little story about South Africa and its investment industry, but sp specifically the people who manage your unit trusts, the premiums uh, when you 
when you, when you buy a life policy, um, your pension fund. But the amazing thing is about that South Africa is a small country at the tip of the continent with a very sophisticated industry. And I, I was just amazed by this. And I kept thinking, why was South Africa different? And it was my journey to try and discover why South Africa was different. Why South Africa could stand tall with any of those uh, places like the US and the UK in this particular industry, the asset management industry. And that really is the story I was trying to tell. It's an easy read because when I was writing it, I was channeling my mother. I, she just had to be able to read some of the book and say, I know what she was saying. So it's a story about South Africa and it's a story to be proud of. And that really was what I tried to do. Thank you. Well, thank you. tonight and if you are interested in the book we've got a, a bit of paper down there with um, information you can leave us your details and then we will get back to you we have got a few copies here tonight if you are interested <laughs> always when candies give me this platform uh, nothing else to say but I always thank everyone who took their time to come and be part of this journey thank you Candice, thank you, family, thank you, staff, uh, Candice Behrman, and yeah, everyone. And please enjoy the exhibition. I'll be on one on one for everyone who wants to know maybe about the technique, how I do this, that, and that. Yeah, but no, thank you so much for coming. Thanks. Saluta. Aluta. Aluta.